Hey adventurers, I've got some excellent partners with me today. I am back where I grew up uh, in Northern Illinois. I've got my, my nephew, my nieces, Tatiana's in the back there, and we are looking for some salamanders, some special things that might be out here. So stay tuned. I hope we find some good stuff today. You found a snake? Who found it? Wait, here. What? I just the tail? How crazy is that? Look at that. Hello. Wow. We thought it was a, a, a worm, but yeah. now it's a snake. Whoa. Look at that. Good spot. High five. You guys found a tiny little garter snake. Good job. Excellent. So here's that beautiful little garter snake uh, that they found. The kids are already off looking for something new. I just got myself here with Ashley. Excellent. Uh, and like I said, this is a tiny little common garter snake. Specifically, it is looking like it is a Chicago garter snake. If we, if we zoom in a little bit, we can see that the, the markings on the neck do break that yellow uh, dorsolateral stripe. And so that's one of the main field marks we're looking for to differentiate this between the eastern garter snake, the other subspecies for the common garter snake. So cool to see this little guy. Temperatures are kind of cold, um, but it's good. Oh my God, the kids are calling me. I think they might want to go look for something else. So we'll put this guy back and see if there's anything else to find. All right. Did I take it off you? Go back under your log. Put the log back, and he's already, under. already trying to tuck himself under. Yep. All right, it started to rain a bit, and I've lost my companions, but I've come to a spot that's been really productive for blue-spotted salamanders. So we're gonna do a little bit of flip and see what's here. It looks like it's changed a little bit. I don't see all the same logs that I used to because it's been about a year since I've been here. But let's uh, let's get flipping and see what out what's out there. Figured maybe even we can do some live herping today. Anybody here? No. Nope. This um this spot is also really good for some of the fr local frog species. I've seen spring peepers and Oriole chorus frogs here. Um, although usually I hear them in the spring and the winter. Anybody there? No. This one's pretty big. Look at that, this is amazing. Okay, this is a new species for me. I have never seen one of these before. This is a red-bellied snake. Whoa, this is very exciting for me. I had suspected that these guys might be here, but I'd never seen one before. Sweet. Let me pick this guy up and show you exactly why they're called red-bellied snakes. Look at that belly right there. It is bright orangish red. Now from the top, they look very similar to the uh, decays brown snakes, but I could tell from that little part on the neck that this guy was a little bit different. And just, oh wow, this is just amazing. I have never, this is a lifer for me. So this is exciting and what an excellent display. I'm gonna have to take some pictures before I put this guy back all right well that was lovely let's get this guy back under his log oh yep he's going down in there bye fellow let's see what else there's out all right these logs are usually some of the best aha and just like that we've got one
take a quick picture, a little bit of close-up video. So this guy, like I said, these logs right here are definitely some of the best. And of course, we flipped up our blue spotted salamander. Really exciting. We're gonna take him out, put his log back, uh, and uh, keep looking. Yeah, like I said, this is the reason that we came to this spot. This is really beautiful. They have really just beautiful colors. Oh, and he's doing his little tail wiggle. So this is a neat behavior that I've seen in some of the salamanders out here. They'll have their, their tails dance like that. And I think it's so that a predator will, it'll draw the attention of a predator. And so they're not gonna bite its head, they'll bite its tail. But excellent to see this little guy. I've seen these guys so many times, so we're just gonna let him go crawl right back under and see if there's any more. If that one's there, this one probably also is usually pretty good. Um, nobody under here though. It might just be that, that one fella. I think that's gonna do it for this location. One great salamander, one great snake. Uh, of course, one of those is a lifer for me, but we can't spend all day here, so we gotta keep going. Oh, look at that. We have a new lifer for me. This guy is giant. This is a tiger salamander, and look at the size of the log this guy was under. I've uh, been flipping a lot of smaller logs but he has decided to be under this huge one here. I am so excited. These guys are pretty hard to find out here um, and very dependent on water, but what a gigantic salamander. Let's, uh, we're gonna pick him up and uh, put his log back and then take a closer look. All right, this is a much better look now. You can see if the camera focuses properly that it is a dark salamander with these nice sort of yellowish blotches on the side. So that's sort of our identification mark. Now, you know, there are um, spotted salamanders that aren't found that far away from here, um, but they will have more sort of rounded spots. They're usually in a, uh, a pair of of lines down the back, where this guy, uh, the pattern is a little bit more all over the place, and especially on the side here. So, really cool to see. And this is, uh, like I said, this is a my lifer, but I believe that this is a full grown adult. Um, I don't think, I think that this is, I mean, this is pretty big, and I think is, is as big as they get. So, neat uh, that we finally got one. What an excellent way uh, to, uh, to add to the video here. All right, bye fella. Squeeze in right there, should be fine. Yeah, I think you got room. Yeah, I see it goes deeper there. And just like that, he gets tucked away. We've had some great luck so far. Not a ton as far as numbers go, but we've had some really nice variety. I mean, come on, I've even gotten two lifers already. Well, we're about maybe an hour from I grew up now, and I think we'll get one more species to show you. Um, I'm hoping that we can get a spotted salamander. And then you can see the differences between that tiger from earlier and, uh, and what the similar looking spotted salamander looks like. So we've got some flipping to do. Here's a log right here. Let's see what we can find. Oh, oh it's right in front of me. I wasn't even paying attention. He's got a little thing on him. Let's pick him up. Check it out. This is a lovely garter snake. This looks a lot, yep. You can see those black bars on the neck. They do seem to break that yellow um, lateral stripe there. So I would say that this is another Chicago garter snake, subspecies of the common garter snake. So nice to see one more for the list. But uh, we got more to find and don't have a ton of time here, so we'll put him back and try for the next thing. All right, thanks buddy, see you later. Well this, I like big logs like this, but this is pretty big, so hopefully I can flip it in one. Okay, good, <gasps> yes. All right, we've got a lovely salamander here, and I don't see any others. Let's 
Oh, this big worm. Let's put that log back. Wow, okay. This is another blue spotted salamander. I really love how we can see the beautiful colors, especially contrasting with this green moss here. Now we are on the search for his cousin, um, the, uh, the spotted salamander, which is in the same genus as these guys. So I don't have a ton of time here. Was something else there? No, I don't have a ton of time. So I'm gonna take this guy and put him back. There he goes. And we're on to find the next species. Here we go. All right, time for a little bit of bird watching lesson. These two giant woodpeckers, these are the largest woodpeckers in North America. These are pileated or pileated woodpeckers. Uh, there's a dispute on what's the right way uh, to pronounce it, but this is uh, really a great view. If I had binoculars, this would be crystal clear. Um, they are super close by. And I think there's actually might be a third one that I heard calling uh, that's nearby as well. <laughs> All right, check out this little guy. Hopefully he doesn't jump out of my hand again. Let's see if we can get it to focus. Oh, he is. Well, you can see that light spot under the eye. That is a good indication that this is a gray tree frog. Just an itty bitty one. Now, they will change colors and uh, they'll often be gray. It just really depends on temperature. But, re whoa, really cool to see him. I think he just fell. That might be, yep, that might be the last we see of him because the they are hard to find. Now, there are two species in this area, the Cope's gray tree frog and the common gray tree frog. Unfortunately, we would need to hear them calling in order to know which species it is. Now, I, nope, it doesn't look like I'm gonna be able to re-find that guy, but you got a good look. Another species for the trip, unfortunately not one that I can categorize as a new species for the year, unless I knew the exact species. Well, sometimes you get your targets and sometimes you don't. Uh, we still got a number of good things at this spot. One blue spotted salamander, that uh, great tree frog, and of course, another common garter snake, but missed out on that spotted salamander. Now, luckily I've got one more opportunity, I think, to find a spotted salamander before the year's over. Uh, and that's actually going to be next week when I'm off to Montreal and hopefully I'll also be able to publish the video to be one week after this one. But I still got a little bit of time in Illinois to search for stuff. So we'll see. There might be another salamander, another snake to show you. But we got to get going for now. All right, well, it is my last day here in Illinois, and I am at a park that's very close to where I grew up, one of my favorites uh, as a kid. And this is a great place to see more blue-spotted salamanders. So we're gonna get flipping and see if any of them are out today. Ugh. Oh, look at that. One more salamander, let's get him. Okay, whoa, another blue-spotted, this guy, is a good size too. Okay, let's put his log back first. Ugh. Ugh. There we go. And we can take another close look. One more blue spotted. This is really a great time of year to look for these guys. Honestly, I'm only I'm only here in the in the early fall and the late or sorry, in the late fall and the early spring. So but Lovely, he's definitely a good size one too, a bit bigger than the one we had yesterday. But let's see what else there is to find. And as you probably know, it's always good to remove these guys before we put the log back so they don't get squished or anything like that. Nope. Here, go back under your log. That's where it's safe. Under there. Okay, he's freaking out. Come on, buddy. A little tail tap usually helps. And there he goes. All right, another look at the uh, that blue spotted. I'm a little jumpy having just flipped up a bunch of bees or hornets or something. But uh, so that's why I'm out of breath because I sprinted down the path 
until I felt like I was out of range. But cool see, oh, nope, I'm not, I'm not out of range. I'm not out of range. They're here, they're here. Let me make sure this little guy gets back to his spot and then I gotta go, I gotta go. All right, put you back under, go back under, all right. Nope. Okay, but the bees are here, I gotta go. Okay, so those bees kind of messed some things up, made me a little nervous here, but I'd come to this area and I thought I was filming. I flipped these logs and I love areas like this because uh, these logs are just very easy and manageable um, and accessible. And uh, oh, I do see one bee on the ground there. Uh, so I won't spend a ton of time here, but I did flip a little salamander under here. That's the, that's the last clip. And I did come back and made sure that he got tucked in under his log. Yeah, he's definitely not there anymore. But that's one of the, one of the biggest concerns about, uh, about flipping. For whatever reason, like the, the bees and the hornets are a little different out in California. And so I don't flip over a log and, and get a huge, uh, wasp nest but uh but yeah they uh they can definitely chase you for a number of yards so be careful and uh and when that happens run away for you know as long as uh until you get tired i guess thank you so much for watching if you like this kind of content please remember to like and subscribe i'm greg Schechter. this is Schechter natural history and i'll see you in the field yeah.